Oh, hello again, and welcome back to 3D Additive Fabrication. My name is Xander, and today we're going to talk about print calibration. Now, given how big of a topic this is, we're actually going to break this up over the next couple of videos, with the first one talking about calibration cubes, and the second one talking about hollow square cubes, and the third one talking about temperature towers. But before we get started, we want to cover some of the basics of stepper motors. So here's to our reporter in the field, Xander. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, other Xander. Stay fresh. Now I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite friends, the two-phase DC stepper motor. Now you find these in almost every type of 3D printer, whether it be Cartesian or Delta, so we're just going to cover how those work before we get too far into calibration, so that way you can see where all these steps are coming from and the actual movement is coming from for your print. So we're going to look right down the shaft of the motor in this image here, and we're going to see right away that the rotor has 50 teeth. Look at all those teeth! And the stator has 48 teeth that are broken up into four different groups for a 1.8 degree motor. It's actually eight different groups with a 0.9 degree motor. Now, you would assume that these teeth are going to be aligned to the teeth in the rotor, but they're actually not. We have four different groups actually. So our red group here uh, is aligned to the teeth, and then our blue and our green group, so here and here, are half aligned, so they're just out ever so slightly. And the final group, the black, are unaligned. And what this allows us to do is to have four different positions for each tooth to be in. So, because of that, we are able to do some simple mathematics and find out that with the four different variations on 50 teeth over 360 degrees, that we have 1.8 degrees of motion. Or for our 0.9 degree friends, those are nice motors, you have the same 50 teeth, but you have eight possible positions due to the additional groups on the stator, which allows you to get 360 over 400 or 0.9 degrees of movement. Now, how does that impact your 3D printing, you're asking? Well, when your 3D printer tries to move 100 millimeters, it knows that it needs to make a certain amount of steps to get that distance. Now, if there is any kind of drag in the system, or your belt is loose, or your feed screw is skipping, or there's too much friction or tension, you may not get that full movement. So, what we're going to do today is use our calibration cube, which you can find down in the link below, to print on our 3D printers. And we're going to find out if all of our stepper motors are tuned properly to our machine, and if not, we're going to go over how to fix them. So, before we check our 20 mil calibration cube, we have to know what we're going to check with. So, this is a vernier or a caliper, depending on which part of the world you're in. There's a wide variety of names for it, but they all function about the same. For 3D printing, you don't need a, a crazy Sterrett or Mitutoyo vernier. You just need something that's going to give you the basic measurements, that way you can recalibrate and fix your print size. So, this one here is lovely. Cost me $20 back at the old Princess Auto. And I'm going to show you how to set it up so that way you can check your parts properly. So first, you will see here that there is the reading dial, which keeps track of where it's at based on the movement of the slide. So we're going to close this one up. You can see it's a little out there. So first thing we're going to do is open it up and we're going to clean the blades on both sides with our finger real quick. Just be careful. Some of those points are sharp. And then we're going to close it up again. And the key here is to push to the hardness that you push to. So I like to be a little firm with mine. I'm going to hold it right there. Now you can see that it's not at zero. That's not going to help me any. So most of them have a zero button. Sometimes it's also the power button. And I'm just going to hit that zero. Excellent. And then I'm going to check it by repeating a couple of times. And that's going to tell me that it's well calibrated. Now that we have that well calibrated, we can bring out our fancy calibration cube. And we're going to go around here, take some quick measurements. So on our X side, we have 20.18, so that's well within our tolerance. Check our Y side, get a good reading here. So 20.2, eh, that's all right. I probably wouldn't change that, that's close enough to tolerance. And then we'll check the top here. And we got 19.85, so also pretty close. So I would consider this printer fairly well calibrated. 
Um, but uh, if you're a stickler for details, you can definitely go in and, and hone those in so it'd be exactly 20 mil. And now we're gonna talk about what we're looking for in our 20 mil calibration cube. So all sides should be 20 mil plus or minus 0.2 millimeters. That's 0.7875 inches plus or minus 0 0.0079 or about eight thou, give or take, uh, for my uh, Imperial friends. And then on the actual surfaces, we're gonna take a real good look here. And we're looking for any kind of surface deviation. If we're seeing holes or empty shallow spots, that's gonna tell us that we're under extruding, over extruding. Um, it's gonna tell us whether we are moving the right distance and whether our stepper motor in the extruder is moving the right distance. Overall, as we saw in the measuring, this one was pretty good. But we're gonna look at some bad ones in just a moment here and talk about how to adjust. So now that we covered how to measure the steps, let's talk about adjusting your steps. So first I'm gonna take a handy dandy measurement of this one here, and I had a value of 20.3. So that's over our plus or minus 0.2 millimeter uh, tolerance. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and adjust that within our EPRONs. I'm not gonna go into how to do that because it varies from printer to printer to printer. When you're ready and you're sure that you wanna make a calibration adjustment, go and, and check with your machine supplier or find a video on how to get to that information if you don't know how. Um, but I will show you the math to correct the calculation. So in most machines, uh, motion is expressed in steps per millimeter. If you're one of those crazy imperial people and have switched it over, it might be in steps per inches. In my machine right now, I have 80 steps for every one millimeter of travel. So that means that on that little rotor, 80 steps have to go by to get one millimeter. So if we had that reading of 20.3, we have our AP, which is our adjustment percentage, equals the calibration value. So that's our 20 millimeters over the measured value or M, which was 20.3 millimeters. And that gives us this nice little decimal 0.985. So when we go to make the adjustment, we'll take our 80 millimeters from before and multiply it by the 0.985 and we get the new value, which is 78.8 uh, steps per millimeter. And once you have that calculation, you just have to go type that in right where the 80 was and test again. Now, a few words of caution before we get started. First of all, changing your EEPROM is taking your life into your own hands with your printer make sure that you thoroughly understand it before you do it. Second of all, uh, this calculation will work both if it's over and under. Third, always print it three times and make sure that you have a consistent value. And then after you change it, do the print again and make sure that it adjusted the way you wanted it to. The last thing you wanna do is to make the adjustment the wrong direction and end up having prints that are even worse than before. And with that being said, that is how to adjust your steps per millimeter. Don't be a turkey. Always keep track of the changes that you're making and the values that they were before. So if you make a mistake, you can turn it back to what it was before. Don't be a turkey.